exciting. Do you know where your IT pros are? We don't. It's Patch and Switch. And now two guys who really want to make a joke about their landscaping company. Yeah, we're not going there. It's Patch and Switch. <laughs> okay. You got me there, man. <laughs> Four, four Seasons Podcasting. Nice. Four Seasons Podcasting? <laughs> four Seasons Total Podcasting. Did, yeah. did you see they're selling t-shirts that say Lawn and Order on them? Lawn and Order. Yeah. Who's that? And Make absolutely. America Rake Again. Make America Rake Again works Who's too. Make America Rake Again. Who's that? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> so, well, hey, everybody. Voice. Welcome to the big program. Uh, yeah, so, we're back. And 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 as I'm sure you heard the, the dulcet bass tones of, of of our special guest. Ladies and gentlemen, we are joined by the legend known as Mr. Richard Campbell. For being able to make that all work out. Uh, I just noticed you have plants behind you. <laughs> you know, you know, sometimes when you're married, stuff happens in your office. <laughs> They're, they're not blooming we're or anything. About the plants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what I'm saying. <laughs> one day they just appeared, and there's things you. Sometimes you're outnumbered one to one. Yeah. And so now there are plants. Nice. It works. It definitely works. Uh, uh, let's I'm say hello to everybody. So. <laughs> A uh, big hello to uh, Aspen Forrester, to AZ uh, Cloud Elf Exchange SME, to Fair Brit Foul Temper in the PDXs. Uh, I am pure uh, K McFerrin Kowski, KT Baker, Mr. TJ12, not Mr. TJ11. That's a totally different person. Different. Uh, the shadiest of pandas, Skippy Trades. Oh, nice. Uh, and Sismus. Sismus. I like Sismus. It's like Christmas, yes. but with systems. That's awesome. Uh, Tom and Tom's. Uh, TDI Bone, TE Cable Guy, Terp8472, VNK, Virgo Pros, Wireless Life in the CDNs, and Dark... Oh my gosh, is that Dark Soul? We'll call it Dark Soul. Um, I see Gregor's it also be Dark in Warrior. It's not Dark I, Warrior, is it? No, it's okay. XX Dark... Derek, Derek. Uh, yeah. Anyway, nice. uh, sorry. Uh, Defcon veteran also in the house. Uh, so, so good morning, everyone. If I haven't nice. said hello, um, did, did I miss Izzy again, or is she just not? I don't think she's even coming to the show anymore. She is um, off uh, traipsing around a a Swiss Alps village this weekend. I do believe I saw footage of her and uh, her significant other fiance. Um, Mr. Thomas Maurer, uh, looking at cats inside of and outside of houses recently. So that's where they're at. Well, you got to get Izzy a hat. Uh, Chad is talking about uh, Rick and Richard having similar shirts. Yes. Is this a Canadian uniform? It's, it's absolutely a Canadian thing, for sure. My Tilly's upstairs, but I haven't got a head to hide, right? <laughs> nice. <laughs> so uh, so I, I call this a Sudbury dinner jacket. Nice. Um if if you don't know where that is, Sudbury is this nice little town. It's northern Ontario. That's uh, got a population of oh, I don't know what, but uh, happens to have a good couple of um, what's, it, what's their business? This their 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 mine. smelter. They're, they're yeah, smel they're easy to find. Just look for the scar in the earth. That's yeah. Sudbury. <laughs> the open trench mining. <laughs> yes. Anyway, on the, uh, that's in the Ontario side. On the BC side, there's a town called Trail. And it's the you know trail of polluted debris running down uh, you know downstream from the mining facilities, same right. kind of thing. If you're gonna dig nickel out of the ground and iron out of the ground, you're gonna do some damage. So, so I do have to ask though, where did you get your flannel shirt from? What's the what is the brand of this one? Oh, I don't know. It's some Canadian Canadian thing or Eddie is Bauer. Loblaws? Did you get did you buy it at Loblaws when you were buying yeah. your groceries? Uh, when I when I see when I think Loblaws, I think dumpsters. But okay, you know, <laughs> you, right? Such an East Canadian Coast Canadian tire. versus West Coast Canadian. Yeah, yeah I know, eh? So my, mine is a Duluth Trading. I've gone to the American side. It's five point six ounces of brushed cotton. Uh, I've got another one, which is a Carhartt, which is an eight point nine ounce brushed cotton, which is much thicker. Um, has a nice weight to it on the shoulders. Yeah. 
well it's because it's you know you always wonder how canadians go around in the winter time without a jacket on it's because you're wearing a shirt that's warmer than most people's <laughs> <laughs> very true <laughs> you know there, there there's certain things that i i i project talking about on the show uh the amount of ounces in a cotton flannel was one of those things that I never anticipated <laughs> ever discussing on the Patch and Switch show. I'm just, I don't know what even Didn't to say. I can't far. even contribute. Nice. <laughs> Nowhere to go. No. Nice. I'm, I'm just happy that you're even here, uh, just because uh, I heard rumors that you were like easily up way before the crack of dawn at like five something to be able to do that other show. Yeah, I, I, I did a I did a little guest appearance um, on AZ Update though today um, in honor of having the token American on the show. We did call it AZ Update. Okay. Um, nice. Yeah. So so we did that show. So I've had like six or seven cups of coffee already. So today's show, nothing possibly could go wrong during today's no, program. No, I've, I thought it was I thought it was Do like not a, jinx us. I, I thought it was a uh, a camera issue with the amount of vibration in your picture, but it's actually just you. It's just you. <laughs> it's, no, it's, it's just me shaking yeah yeah I mean, it, it, it really is just me shaking and in the second uh, half of the okay. show kidney failure <laughs> uh, uh, hey should we start the program should we should we kick off things um i mean would that be a record early time in the show the fact that we're going to actually start the show at 906 yes. wow. or do we need to talk more about flannel uh, well, you know, I, I think we're good. I, I think um, Wireless Life called it out correctly. That's probably a Joe Fresh version of uh, of flannel from Mr. Mr. Campbell over there. Joe Fresh is the in-house clothing brand that you can get at your grocery store. So it's probably True. it. And I don't, I don't I, think I, it is, but, you know, I, I live with my, my wife is in the clothing trade. OK, you know, and, and, and she's on the technical side, like there's a whole engineering aspect of clothing that none of us ever think about because it's mm -hmm. just you just you, you think clothes just magically fit, don't you? Yep. And so often things appear. Right. It's just kind of normal for me uh, that, that I don't have very much control over clothing or plants like neither one of those things. Are nice. <laughs> and, and she does an awful lot of the custom fit work and so forth. And so there's a lot of. Uh, often on her screen, there are undressed women, which apparently I get in trouble when that happens. But for her, that's her job. She's at work. So it's not fair at all. <laughs> Katie Baker uh, asked, do they make a Hawaiian flannel shirt? That would be a question for Ledwig, but he's not in the room today. This think. needs to be made. If there yes. isn't one, that needs to be made. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you can you can wear a Hawaiian print in the winter and feel and be comfortable. That'd be a good idea. <laughs> we can work in that direction. They are calling out as well in the chat room that it is Friday the thirteenth. I never even thought of that. I mean, I, don't I still, mention it, please. I've already I had one problem. In 20, yeah, in 2020, I thought it was still like June, April, June, April. Yeah. I, like they just like mix them all together. Isn't it what, March 273rd. It's yeah, 200, and March 272nd. Rich, your and, your and day. And the crazy ahead. part is like. It literally has. It, it's it's been forever thinking that the the clock is just ticking like one second every eon, but then all of a sudden like summer's gone. Like here, I, I, I'm assuming it's the same up in BC, but here outside it is dark gray. It is wet. It is just nasty looking. I have to take my vitamin D while I'm looking at my bright sunshine light down in the kitchen in the morning for my medication and for my uh, uh, my my. Um, Sunlight therapy lights yeah. once in a while. It's crazy. Absolutely. Well, crazy. I think we we up here we got the same storm you guys did just a little bit later, right? But it, yeah. yeah, it blew in last night. Kind of crazy uh, stuff. I, I tried. Uh, Absolutely. And chat says, sounds like Richard could do a run as radio show on the science of flannel shirts. Well, I am known for. Uh, <laughs> We call them geek outs, and we've done some fairly, I mean, it's typically your space and alternative energy and things like that. Although I did yeah. do one on antibiotics, which was an interesting challenge, because I basically crammed like a semester worth of, of medical science into my head nice. to get it done. But could we? Yes, we could. Should we? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> but that's, yeah, I'm not really quite sure. Not really quite yeah. sure. Uh, so let's kick off the program. We're going to start uh, with uh, what do we? What do, what is it that we start uh, start with? Um, from the from trenches. the trenches. From the yes. trenches. <clears throat> uh, from the trenches is the stuff that we are doing in our day jobs, and we'll start with our special guest, Mr. Richard Campbell. What has been up with you lately in the day job? What what's happening? What what's the news? What have you been working on? 
I have been migrating to the cloud. So we've talked about this before, but I've been running a data center in my house <coughs> since the 2000s, right? So real, realistically, it, it paid for the house for that matter. I got about 82 user rack space, multiple redundant internet conditions, generator backup, you know, all the basics. All uh, the basics. But, but if you think about back in the dot-com boom era, we used to do, you go to Microsoft Labs to test that infrastructure, all your failover and scaling mechanisms and things. So I built that in the house so that I didn't have to travel as much. We'd actually test the infrastructure here and then we'd ship it out or then order it up once we'd validated it. And so ever since then, I've had my own Exchange server and mail server and you know all of the proxies and, and hardware necessary to do that. But I think it was looking at the upgrade path from Exchange 2016 to 2019, it made me said, I would rather stab myself, like enough. <laughs> and so finally I have I move. push, I, I, and, and, and the, the obscenity is being an MVP RD for all these years, like Microsoft has been giving me E5 accounts for a long time. Like I really, have, it's not even a cost thing. I just had to do it. <laughs> so I've actually done it now and pushed, a, pushed the, some mailboxes and things up there. I gotta tell you, it's pretty sweet. Like that cloud thing, it's gonna catch on, man. It's slick. <laughs> I highly recommend it. <laughs> uh, but the other aspect of that, in the midst of all, one of the things that was pushing me was my exchange shirt was going to expire in October. Yeah. Right. And it's all, you know, updating exchange shirts is not for the faint of heart. It's a pain in the butt. You, know, you really got to focus, make sure you do it right. Like bad things happen. So I'm like, well, I'm getting my mailboxes off of here. So I won't have to do this. And, in, and at the same time, I was setting up a website for the history of .NET. And I finally spent the time to learn Let's Encrypt and the Acme bot which runs in Azure brilliantly, because these are these 90 day free certs, they're good certs, but they you need to renew them constantly. And so the Acme bot will do the renewal and uh, got it up and running on a website in an, in an app service, and then got it set up on my on-prem exchange server. So it's running like a hot damn now that I don't need it. Works great. Like most technology, as long as it isn't used, it works perfect. Nice. Now, are you concerned with the amount of stuff? Because I remember, I think you were talking to me about uh, ages ago about how long your exchange environment has been around and used yeah. for possible spam filtering and stuff like that and spam testing by the exchange team. Is, okay. Do you have to worry about that now still or not? So, yeah, I, I actually, so the issue is ga.com. Okay, so this is a domain I registered in the mid '90s. You know, pretty much as early as we were allowed to register. It's a three-letter domain. The RFC for the markup language came Basically, out. Basically, yeah, nice. right. And so uh, there are no three-letter domain dot coms left, right? Like they're everyone in the book. So ga being, you know, like foo, it's just one of those silly things. And it, last time I looked, it was five million spam a month. Nice. So basically, I, I have an MX record wow. that's a DDoS attack, right? Like I pointed at any connection. <laughs> Even if you deny everything, just if I change the IP on that MX record, that IP is having a bad day. <laughs> and, and I have gone through a few different mail proxy services where I've said, like, listen, I have this really old domain and like there are consequences. And, and they're like, ah, don't worry, we're fine. It's like, I'm changing the MX record now because I don't use it for much. It's literally <laughs> that contaminated and had the guy on the other end of the phone like, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. so it's a. It is aimed at Azure now, and so nice. they they are processing it just fine, and that's great. You know, take take more stress off. But so as but yeah. so if you're all of a sudden noticing a higher in a, a, a higher quality bar all of a sudden from spam filtered inside of Office 365, we can thank Rich Campbell and and the three letter domain uh, for improving our heuristics for. Uh, <laughs> The spam, the spam devices. For better or worse, yeah. So, yeah, but it, yeah, it is a good thing. I feel good about being the move. And one of the things I did do, because I have, again, I have been running that little home domain configuration yep. since I converted it from a PDC in 2000. And, it, and it's just like, I'm not, I am not hybridizing. I'm not doing it. I'm making a dead break. It's, you're just dragging debris that is uncleanable at this point. I have a couple of servers that are showing up in references that I can't remove. And it's like, I'm just breaking. And the stuff that's going in the cloud is not carrying any of that stuff forward. It's it's time. And the kids are all moved out, you know? Yeah. So it's just it's, you and the missus now. Yeah, exactly. And so a lot of less of that is necessary. It's funny, you know, I normally travel a lot. This is the longest stretch I've been home in 20 years. And in this period of me being home for nine months, both my children moved out. I don't know if there's a correlation there at <laughs> is all. Is there a correlation there? Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. I, I'm happy with the setup as it stands, but that's what happened. It, so, it, yeah, it's time to simplify. Causation is not correlation. Yeah, Just true. remember that. 
Normally we talk about uh, beer money piece, but I do have to ask since you, you work out of your house. So has there been parts of your home infrastructure that have also moved out as well? Um, like, you know, I know how you have lights controlled and security systems and other things like that. But what do you do for everyday file shares? What do you do for everyday stuff between uh, your client systems that you have inside your household? Yeah, I mean, largely, I've always run in the domain infrastructure in here because I was, you know, it was a way to test it to live with that pain, right? And to run, not run as local admin, like just to live with all of that uh, on a routine basis. But I, I'm, you know, I, for the first time in a very long time, I'm actually considering can I actually retire the domain controller out of the house altogether? And if I was going to look at something to migrate to, I think it'd be Synology. Oh, yeah. You know, I just I, I appreciate and I'd probably go relatively high end. I do have a fair bit of stuff and I have racks. So you got to get the rack, you know, more often than not, I pick the rack mount version for a reason. Nice. Yeah, that's that. I mean, that's where I'm I, I've been looking. Um, it's kind of one of those. Where's, where's the next spending? Because I'm looking I'm going to Rick, Rick has got us all and, and most of the viewers uh, wanting to build or upgrade PCs. And now that more and more supplies are available, right? It's not hard to get, you know, processors, unless of course you want the latest and greatest AMD. Video cards are a little trickier, um, right particularly now. if you want anything in the, the 3000, like 3080, 3090. Um, but as you start looking out at, at forecasting, right? We have to do the budget forecasts in terms of what is the next geeky thing that I need? Those Synology uh, boxes are are very very appealing, particularly you know if you've got a lot of media to share, that kind of a thing, um, and they have services, right? Yeah, well, and they and they run Docker containers, so you don't you're not looking at just the feature list. You're saying, oh, I have enough room in here that if I want to build something a little more exotic, it's got a place to run in that box. Very cool. Very cool. What about you, Mr. Mr. Claus, Mr. Uh, RGB? What what is happening in your day job? Um, well, day job wise, as a team lead, I'm working with my folks to get through at Microsoft what's called the Connect season. So uh, everybody's got to go off and sit back and reflect how their last six months has been, which is you know. 2020. So <laughs> how's it been? <laughs> you know, uh, so we've got that that's going on right now at the work side of things. Uh, I'm uh, like, like Rich was talking about with his infrastructure, looking at trying to do some upgrades and replacements now that I got my PC system working up again. Uh, but I'm actually looking at going with a uh, just a headless single server. I like having stuff that's on local that then also has been backed up and available in the cloud as well. And so I've been actually documenting and getting ready for a blog post and a video coming out about this next week, uh, setting up a 2019 headless server uh, that is up and running entirely from command line, lots of fun, get it all up and going, and then doing a um, uh, Azure file sync to be able to go off and get synchronization of files up into Azure in the back end uh, so that I have a caching of local copy of files that are important, but then the long-term stuff stays up inside of Azure. So that's currently the progress that I've got going on here. So it's kind of work, kind of home as well, as far as bleeding edge goes in that direction. Um, and uh, yeah, that's mostly the kind of stuff I'm working on right now from a perspective of the work sides. But uh, uh, we had some, you know, mundane stuff like training and stuff like that you had to get done and get uh, finished off before the end of the month so getting some of those training courses knocked out here as well uh the therapy 8472 synology support really good uh on the ball very nice too had a problem with the new synology nas spoke to support got a new genuine psu within 48 hours wow um was struggling to find a real one that's not compatible. Their support team really good, so awesome. Uh, TDI Bone there, uh, great as a vendor as well. Just signed up as a partner for them, so very supportive. Have a great program for learning all of their tech, and then um, our our bots uh, our, our bots struck those messages. The bot was out of control, so I put the bot on timeout. Just oh nice. Just so you know, chat. Yeah, I think I think I was messing around with the bot and ended up clicking a a, a button in the bot so that people couldn't post. Uh, too fast. dissertation, I guess, and, yeah. and 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 too fast. So yeah, we 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 resolved it. We 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 resolved it. Uh, Joey, um, did you put the bot in the corner for a while? Yeah, we put the bot on timeout. Yeah, yep. okay, bots on timeout. 
I have been um, working on, so we just came out of that period of, of connects, at least in my world. So we've kind of moved on past that. And uh, we actually have another virtual conference um, that's coming up. Um, it's a couple of day conference for specific partners um, that we call the, the advisory committee or the PAC, and they'll be coming in and we'll be having some chit chats with them. So I've been talking, uh, building a presentation there. Uh, so getting ready to do more virtual presentation and virtual learning um, moving in next week. Richard, before we join, uh, before we went live on air, mm -hmm. you were talking about your adaptation to speaking in a virtual world. And yeah. this is something that I think would be very cool to have the audience here and Rick as well, because Rick showed up five minutes before the show started. So he, he say, I didn't hear this topic. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, of course. Well, yeah, because we actually were here at 8.15 this morning, not 8.45. So uh, my calendar said 8.30. Eight uh, my, I followed the calendar invite that I was sent, which and, and I prefer to show up a couple of minutes ahead of things. So I was oh, here wow. at 8.30. 13. Which the producer very much appreciated. Uh, nice. Well, yeah. Even if the producer does hang up on his own call occasionally. Like, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll let that pass. Uh, I mean, I've been a ways to contribute to the community and to join that part. And, and these days, I guess I'm an old hand at it. In fact, hang on, we've last... lost audio. Hang on, Richard. Hang on, we've lost audio. Oh, I <laughs> jinxed it. <laughs> I'm going to blame the engineer. source yeah. to new scene. No. There we go. Are we good? Nice. There. All right, we're back. All right, so continue. Continue. Yeah. Apologies. But, you, yeah, you got you to you start back over again, I think. So, I mean, I, the, the reality is that I've been a speaker for, for more than 20 years. In fact, the last real conference I did in 2020 in Sweden, uh, and we, you know, you look at the audiences and the speakers that we have in our conferences now, they're much more diverse. And so I know most conference organizers have been involved in this long time. So sitting the conference organizer talking about that, and we're having this conversation about, you know, really appreciate you've worked hard on, on these diversity and you still have room for, you know, the old white guy. And he goes, oh. You tip my diversity equation now, too, sir. You are a senior speaker. Uh, oh, wow. I am wow. past 50, and the uh, median age of the speaking cadre was in their 30s. So, like, okay. At the same time, I believe there was an obscene gesture involved. Uh, <laughs> But then, of course, we go into lockdown and everything changes. And again, this is the longest stretch I've been home in 20 years. And I own uh, an in-person conference business. I own Dev Intersection. And we bumped everything out to 2021 as he needed to do. Like, And maybe it'll be further. You know, the pandemic still has a ways to go. We'll, we'll do the best we can. But I've really enjoyed working on the problem of how to communicate effectively with the medium you have. I don't think it's acceptable to treat online as the lesser cousin of in-person. Oh, we can't be in-person, so we're gonna do this. Why shouldn't we take this medium seriously? Now, I mean, it starts with, I get to buy more toys, and that's a feature, like I'm very happy with that. Yes. Upgraded camera, upgraded lighting, you know, the, the digital controllers and so forth, but also thinking seriously about the medium itself. What can we do in this medium that we can't do in person? What makes its own unique value where someone comes away from a keynote excited and enthused the same way they would in person or perhaps even more so because we've been able to communicate the message more effectively. And as I have been talking to conference organizers and other speakers and folks that are coming to grips with, you know, part of my mission in my career is to help others understand technology uh, is how do you do this effectively. So it's fun to be an amateur again and just sort of embrace all that. And then one of the biggest tips I've been pushing on lately is just this, hey, you know, do duets. Work with someone else. You know, in in-person conferences, duets are frowned on. It requires more AV equipment. It costs more in travel and, and, and hotel and so forth. But all of that's been eliminated now. And 
the reality is when two people work on a talk, a talk tends to be better. We tend to push each other for starters. Mm -hmm. And you need more planning because you are collaborating with someone. And you also get vaguely sick of it, so there's always sort of an energy of teasing each other about it, too. And that energy between two people, that when an audience can witness a conversation between peers that they're also having fun with, it's a better way to communicate. It's a better way to teach. And uh, and think we get better. Well, and I've watched you two. And, and it, of course, there's always got to be exceptions, I guess. But, you know, when you do the best you can. <laughs> You are 100 percent correct. Yes, we we are the exception to the to the duo rule. Um, in most cases, uh, a lot of times people will book patch and switch and go. Wait, there's two of them. Um, yeah. I yeah, it, it 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 is what it is. I want to go back to the one thing that you talked about about being a rookie again, mm -hmm. and I've kind of found the same thing. Um, it's fun because you are reinventing. Um, the way that you're having to present. And yes, there's the geek factor and the fact that we get to buy. Research for me on buying stuff is like almost as fun as actually getting the thing that we have. Yeah. Um, but you know, you looking at lights and a new camera and a new setup and cool lights on the wall or whatever, whatever it is, we had to do that relatively quickly because we realized, look, we've been doing patch and switch from the lovely confines of an actual basically TV studio yeah. um, for a number of years. Uh, I mean, let's be real. Even when we were in that that aquarium room with the big electrical panel on the wall, we had basically TV production caliber equipment in there to run it. And it's like, guess what? You're now doing this at home. Right. And, you know, uh, we're not going to give you any money to do this. So we're, we're like, OK. And then we were right on the heels. You know, the lockdown happened uh, for us in February ish. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. We, you know, Washington was one of the, the early lates, or the late earlies. Anyway, uh, and then, you know, we've got big conferences coming up, right? We did, we did inspire. We, we, we had, uh, Microsoft Ignite doesn't count because at that point, you know, we can actually, we actually did, Rick and I did go into the studio to, to do that, but we were doing things from home and having to do these presentations and having to do countdown shows and videos and all of those things. It's been, it, it's, it's been fun because you we've had to teach ourselves how to do it in this medium. And it's not easy sitting here and staring at a camera. Yeah, it's not normal. Versus looking at a room of, you know, 30, 40, 50 people, if you're lucky. Oh, wait, we, you do hundreds, don't you? Yeah, sorry, our bad. We, we, we have the small rooms usually when, yeah. when we present. Or um, the empty rooms when the other. Yeah, well, Somebody asked generally. me once about the largest room I've ever done, and it was a Tech Ed. Do you remember Tech Ed 2009 in L.A., where yeah. we canceled the attendee party because numbers were down a lot, you know, budgets were tight and so forth. And so the, we did the event, we did the sort of attendee party at the venue. And yeah. so we did Speaker Idol finals on a stage, and there was about 7,000 people there. Nice. And and there was a fill. You know, you know, when you're the MC, you sometimes have to do a fill. And so there was a fill, and I went up and I did a bit known as Goliath, which is just a, a geeky bit about a giant hard drive we strapped to a BBS in the early '80s. Uh, and it's about a 10 minute fill, but it's a it's a comedy bit. So I was Mike Spotlight on a 48 inch stage with so many lights on me I couldn't see a thing. And there's no discernible voices at that point. It's just a roar. Now, is it a roar of a bob that's about to tear you to shreds, or are they laughing? <laughs> you don't mm -hmm. know. Right? Yep. Like it's, there's no way to tell. You just do your thing. Somehow you survive. You move on. Yeah. No, absolutely. Do you have any tips for folks? I mean, even in meetings, right? Meetings are different now, too, Yeah. Uh, in this virtual space. What are what are kind of your your quick quick tips? And then we'll move on to the next segment of the of the show as that that you've kind of figured out for presenting in this medium? I mean, audio is still essential, so spend time on a good microphone. Find a friend who's more OCD than you and get on a call with them and go through this until you get a mic you're really, really happy with that you make the difference on. Uh, lighting, most people's lighting is bad. Yeah. And so, you know, spending a little bit of money on lights, there are a bunch of less expensive, more expensive, but you need a couple of different lights on you. They, they, they take some time to get that right. That makes a huge difference. I am fascinated by the emerging etiquette 
of online meetings. Like different cultures, different approaches. I find if I'm running a meeting and I start that meeting with my camera on, more people turn their camera on. But as soon as a meeting gets beyond a certain size, like maybe past about a dozen, the etiquette seems to emerge now where if you're not speaking, you turn your camera off. Yeah. Because it becomes a distraction too, right? So the fact that we're learning those things is really fascinating to me. But I'm also realizing like people are hitting their threshold on how much screen time they can tolerate anymore. Like oh, Zoom yeah. cocktails seem like a good idea in like April and May. <laughs> Way back when. <laughs> yeah, but not, you know, especially when I talk to folks, like I have many friends at Microsoft, and including you two for better or worse. Uh, <laughs> But when I talk to folks whose job, who are in management roles at Microsoft and, and to the point where it's like, hey, you know, you and the wife want to hop on with us uh, this evening and, and have martini and chat. And it's like, listen, I literally be on Teams the entire day. The one thing I don't want to do is sit in front of a camera tonight. Like, I would rather talk on the phone, right, with, uh, on the headset where I can just walk around than actually sit in yeah. that chair anymore. Yeah. So no, 100 percent. That is very interesting. I've, I found that um, that that whole um, start the meeting on camera, and then when whoever's leading that particular section, everybody else turns off their cameras and mutes, and then you pop it back on and unmute when you're interacting. That kind of thing has been that's been something that's been new probably the last month or so for yeah. me because before it was, you know, uh, it's. If it's a camera meeting, everybody's on camera. If it's a non-camera meeting, nobody's on camera. There wasn't this kind of in-between. And now it's, you know, I always try to start mine on camera unless the meeting is before 9 a.m. Pacific time. Then uh, no no cameras. That's just... That's, no bueno. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm, I'm probably not... Yeah, I'm probably not out of pajamas at 9 a.m. Pacific time if nice. there's a 9 a.m. Pacific time meeting. So, yeah. I'm uh, for, for our team meetings, I've got a global team that's both in Europe and also in Australia. So we have extremes for what it is. There's literally only one hour a day where there is some overlap if one side or the other side wants to really extend their hours just to be able to talk. So we've been finding it difficult. But we do our team meetings with the cameras on. And then uh, some people... Um, haven't said if they enjoyed it or don't enjoy it, but they basically are on with the camera all the time. And it's only because we have a small team. It's only because it's like five or six people that get together for the team meeting because of the time split between the two of them. But I do agree. I concur that folks who are going with the, for those larger, broader meetings of like 85 people or something like that, then they only, the, it's only a handful of people that have it on for, yeah. for uh, the most part. Um, Another thing that's been happening, I've been finding, I know Joey's been talking about this as well with me, is that there's an awful lot, you are mentioning meeting fatigue, uh, and I've had people in my team mention this to me as well, it's just that there's been still an over-indexing to have more meetings because we're all remote and we're all at home. People sometimes feel that they need to have a meeting to kind of show that they're actually working or doing things. And so they have a meeting about the meeting to talk about the meeting they're going to have next week about a meeting with the bigger people or something like that. So I'm like, have you seen folks being more about, I need an agenda. Like I'm not coming to this meeting if there's not oh, yeah. a plan. Yeah. And more I've seen more than, I, well, I've definitely seen, I was just in a loop where what's the agenda of the meeting. And they put up the agenda and it said, if we said this, this, and this, do we still have to say the meet have the meeting? Yeah. Like just sort of a, don't meet on reflex anymore. Meet because the only way to do this is to meet. And there's way more interested to resolve things without the meetings. Mm -hmm. To take more, I would argue, take more chances in email. You know, email is a limited communication medium. And often when we're dealing with potentially sensitive stuff, it's like, I don't want to do this in email. I want to talk to you. I would Normally I would go to your office and we would have this chat. And now, but we're so saturated in these online meetings now, I think we're willing to say a few more things in email if it is, if it can get to a point where we don't need synchronous interrupting time with each other to resolve mm -hmm. it. There's actually um, Wired, Wired Canuck is on my team, uh, and he was actually just chatting with me the other day. And he's like, you know what? I actually wouldn't mind just having an open an open space meeting if anyone wants to come and join, just to so have someone else that's there in the background while I'm coding something or while I'm working on a script for automation or while I'm working on a document, whatever it was, he's actually suggested maybe even just doing that just, and it's completely not a meeting. 
It's just if you want to pop in, as opposed to just have the chat going on in the background, have right. a video going on for just for I've an been doing coffee with friends, not on this rig deliberately. Yeah. Like this is the well lit. We're doing the thing. Yeah, I have a lot, you know, just my laptop cam sort of set off to the side. But it's but the big thing has always been I'm getting a cup of tea. Did you want to you know go get your caffeinated beverage and let and talk yeah. and it's about what it's like nothing planned like deliberately non agenda, but I only, I think that's really a one on one thing. Mm -hmm. right? It's just like the two of us hanging out. I've got a couple of minor things to do and and we you know where it goes where it goes. It's a very yeah. different energy. Yeah, I've, I've, I've been taking I've been taking the the team's calls for one on ones, just chatting, having a coffee. I'll be downstairs. It's early in my day. It's later in the day for folks that are over in Europe or East Coast, uh, and just turning on the camera on the as I'm drinking my coffee uh, downstairs, or even as I'm making a coffee on the barista machine, uh, the Breville, um, and just grabbing a chat with somebody because they just wanted to chat. So I'm like, yeah, sure, man, I'm here. Let's 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 talk. We're moving. So yeah, it's. It's uh, I'm definitely everybody is feeling the meeting fatigue. I I didn't actually draw a parallel to what you're saying with the cocktails <laughs> and Zoom stuff. It has definitely died down, uh, and people are definitely trying to find their own level of what what they're comfortable with uh, for doing stuff. AZ Cloud Elf uh, says I'm on the fence. I'm learning to hate virtual conferences and training. Interactions are not the same. Uh, I work so hard to get out of my introvert shell. That's 100% a, a legit thing, right? You work hard, you get out of that introvert shell, you start attending some of these events, and then that's kind of taken away from you. Um, Gregor talked about doing sp two speakers. One does the main talk, the other asks questions and keeps an eye on the audience questions. It works better. Uh, uh, yeah, I agree. And I mean, in this case, it's um, it's more fun when uh, Richard, like you mentioned in that with the with the duo that, you know, when you get tired of it or when something is not necessarily necessarily happening right it's more fun to basically take take the piss out of each other and then sure. work on it right right there and and together and it but is you also have that built-in proctoring effect right that while one's doing yep. the demo the other one's watching the stream or in fielding questions and you can back and drive that demo in a, in a more powerful way with that input Yep, 100%. Uh, Aspen talks about looking up at the camera instead of the screen during a Teams meeting takes some getting used to. And that, again, yep. you know, it's it's that moving. You almost have to move to almost a speaker role even in meetings now because you're talking to – I can only imagine what it sounds like, what this show sounds like just on the other side of the wall here. <laughs> Because I'm having, you know, I leave these things and then one of you is, is speaking and it's just, it's, I'm the only one hearing it. Yeah. It's, it's got to be a very interesting. Well, and then, and then there's, a, there's, there's a long pause, then you laugh uproariously for no apparent reason. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, googly theory. eyes on your camera. Have you heard this one? You know, little plastic googly eyes. You take yes. two of those, you stick them on your camera because you're. Yeah. Your lizard brain is wired to look at faces. And so if you yeah. make a face out of your camera, it helps. The good thing is, is I actually get to see your faces because Rick had put me on the tip of having the tri, uh, of, of having, sorry, a teleprompter and then you put a monitor up underneath yeah. it and then I can put the, the, the audio or the video up there. Right. Uh, TRP8472 been setting up uh, cameras, lights, dedicated webcams for trainers, ended up putting a, a kit together. Um, so uh, there's some baselines he mentions, a minimum kit versus essentials. It's just kind of hard to get used to. Mm -hmm. So you see, um, Lots of people just kind of adapting. Gregor talks about they have open meetings three times a week. Join if you like, work, don't work, whatever. He says it's great. Um, so that's that's super cool. I have, I, I found that I used to listen to a lot of music early in the pandemic, um, just constantly. And that's just always been a trend for me when I worked. But lately I've actually put on like Twitch streams where they're just randomly like talking. It's not that they're they're playing games, you know, somebody could be coding or building a PC. I've been obsessed with watching people build PCs. It's just, it's a geek thing, right? And then yeah. somebody will pop up and, you know, ask a question that I haven't thought about or, you know, there's a lot of things, AIO coolers are kind of the thing, but then you've got somebody who's talking about, look, I want to build a full, you know, custom loop water cooled thing. And I kind of go, Geek brain pops up and whoa, what a, let, now let's pay attention to this. And it gives you that few minutes of break because in having some conversations with members of my team, which I had 
100% admit I've been really bad at doing for the same reasons, Richard, that you mentioned earlier. I get the fatigue, right? I'm on meeting after meeting after meeting after meeting, and we are notoriously bad at having meetings to prove that we're doing something instead of, I don't know, actually doing something. Um, I know, it's our nature as humans, right? And yeah. I don't think that's just limited to Microsoft. I think that's kind of everywhere. Uh, but I've been really bad because it used to be like, I'm going to go get a cup of coffee or I'm going to go hit the restroom. And then on the way to the restroom, you drop by a few people's office and you stand in the doorway and you're like, oh, hey, how's it going? What's going on? What's new? And it, it you know, it's not some 30 minute conversation. It's five or 10 minutes here and there. And then that kind of gets that disconnect moment so that when you get back to your desk, you reconnect, you re-engage, and you're hopefully, you know, out of whatever rut it was that you're in. But those are yeah. the things that I miss. And I found that being able to get that little distraction, even though it's not necessarily as interactive. I mean, one of the things I love, we've got chat. This is what I love about this platform and Twitch is that we've got chat and we build that interactivity into things. I kind of feel like that's missing in a lot of in a lot of ways. So those open meetings, that's a really interesting concept. Mm -hmm. I, I wanted to bring up my, my team currently, we have a chat room inside of Teams that is everybody on the team worldwide and it's just random chat and I will say at least half the chat is GIFs all day long but there's also hey i need a jit approval or hey can somebody look at this and uh or hey i i, I got this working everybody celebrate woohoo and it's nice because it's kind of like having the old team room but it's virtual so <clears throat> yeah we have we have that in our group as well uh ours is called just az ops and uh you'll, you'll have stuff in there about someone t <laughs> the latest one we had was talking about spiders uh, because I've got people from Australia on the team, so <laughs> spiders was coming up, uh, huntsman spiders and stuff like that. Someone was celebrating because they found the first huntsman in their house. They just moved into a new house. Um, but uh, then obviously you got down. some folks. Burn the yeah, house yeah, Basically, yeah, you got people responding back like that. Uh, it gets rather interesting. Gifts and also work stuff. And like you said, celebrations. It is the water cooler, but it's text-based. Um, I, I, I'm having a hard time figuring out the balance between an email when something needs to be sent by email and when something needs to be sent in a team's chats uh, on stuff. I mean, it still freaks me out that, you know, like for during Ignite time frame, all of a sudden someone would ping me on a team's chat to ask me a question. And I'm like, oh, there, this person is that I never would think would actually ping me on a chat, just ping me on a chat to say, hey, what time is this thing going on? I'm like, what? <laughs> it still freaks me out they can do that. So. Do you have a do you have a balance? Do you, can you can you think of a recommended balance that works for you for when something should be a Teams chat, when something should be an actual email, versus a meeting? If you look at the three mediums. Yeah, I think um, versus a meeting versus a phone you know phone call like there's there's an there's a progression of the level of communication that part yep. of it is assessing trust, right? They, you know they you know the person well enough you, the level of formality the level of interrupt, right? Like. You know, the essence of a ringing phone, you, what, what are you saying to me when you call my phone? Whatever you were doing is not as important as this right now. Stop what you're doing. As opposed to, you realize like this emergent etiquette of we always schedule a phone call, which is me asking permission to interrupt you, mm -hmm. right? which is more respectful. Uh, but you also have constrained mediums, like random people don't instant message you for a reason. And when they do, it's, it's an offense. That is an inherently trusted terse medium. So I think Teams operates a higher level trusted email. Email we tolerate people we know less. Uh, if I am looking at an email chain and the email's getting longer, like if you write me a paragraph, my response is two and your response to that is five, the email's failing, right? Like successful emails get shorter. The mm. sequence goes, you know, it ends with thanks. Like that's where you've actually, and it's, so if the email's expanding, I switch the medium. So same thing with Teams. Teams is a quick interaction back and forth at a high level of trust. What about this? You can answer it, done, right? But most thank you. As soon as it's two or three steps and there's some uncertainty, an email's a bit more formal, right? That's a, that's a move up in formality uh, and then a meeting more formal still, right? And, and lower, arguably lower trust still or trust building exercise where it's like, hey, we need to see where we're coming for, from more before we can really talk about these things. And so we have that face time to strengthen the trust relationship enough to know how you're gonna to react to things to then talk about stuff 
-hmm. Although at the same time, I'm a big believer in no meeting is valuable if it isn't followed up by an email that makes those final points. That creates a searchable form of our conversation. Right? If we have a meeting and never and no, there's no residuals from it, you have to debate the value of it unless it was literally truly a trust building exercise. And of course, and the ultimate form of communication when everything else breaks down is pizza. Yes. Right? Lunch. Even remote yep. lunch. Like, I have ordered a pizza to a guy I needed to work with. I ordered a pizza to his place. I got the same pizza for me. So we're eating the same thing together. Because humans are hardwired to trust those they break bread with. You are fundamentally vulnerable when you're eating. Like, that lizard brain kicks in. If I'm willing to eat with you, I trust you at a higher level. It builds it up. In fact, when I've met teams where they won't eat together, you're seeing like that's how broken this relationship is mm -hmm. that, that 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 fundamentally you're resisting having a meal together uh and so you know all of all of this is how do we count or do we have each other's back are we working at the same goal are you presuming my intent to be good when we talk about difficult things because you get you know a trusted team what's the power of it when I say I think you're wrong, your automatic reaction is I'm probably wrong then because I, I trust you enough that you would never say that unless it was really serious. So obviously I've missed something as opposed to someone I don't know where I'm far more likely to defend. It's like, hey, I'm the expert in this space. Like, what, the, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. you know, each of these mediums strengths and weaknesses, right? And, it, and part of it is it's asynchronicity, because asynchronous requires lower levels of friction, where synchronous requires higher level. And interruption, one puts more pressure on, on trust than the other, right? And then scope of communication. It, it is, you don't hop on a call and immediately go to the point. That preamble is part of social dynamics, right? And it's actually establishing trust. Let us remind each, uh, each other that we trust each other. Hey, how's your family doing? You know, how you coping with this? That sort of thing, which is weird. You know, you get a one, one sentence email, right? Which is, hey, I hope everything's well with you. But in a Zoom or in a, in a Teams call, that's the first three or four minutes. Like it's far more intimate. But what what is that psychologically? Making sure we're in the same space, right? We, have, we share a common pain, we share common struggles. Now we can talk about stuff. Mm -hmm. And so I look at each of the ways that we communicate with those metrics in place and say, where am I with this person and where do we need to go? And then when the communication is working properly, change the medium, whatever direction it needs to go. In. Hmm. Super interesting. Obviously, I thought way too much about chat. this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, you, you created pure havoc in chat when you brought yeah, that pizza. Yeah. Oh no. Because because then the pineapple conversation came up, well, and I'll, we're not but, going there, chat. Yeah. Yeah. But I'll tell you this: pulling, a, I'm pulling a team together as an as an external consultant, and I check with everybody about what their pizza preferences are, and that's when we find out there's two vegetarians in the team, and nobody else on the team knew it. Wow. Like, what does yeah, that yeah. tell me about the state of this team? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like the pizza conversation about what we like to eat and how we like to eat it, eat it is a lot about the actual state of our team and how we well, interrelate. Yeah. That's that you know that's a way of thinking of it that I had never done before. <laughs> but I am so going to store that and I'm going to use that. That's that's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, Forty eight minutes into the show, we've gone through one segment. <laughs> Nice. This is a normal thing when the three of us get together. It is. It out. is normal. It this, is. This, this could be a live no, stream. This should be a live stream with smokers going in all three different places, beer being made in the background, and whiskey and or vodka and or beer being drunk and consumed at different times. Corned beef pickling yep. in the in the, oh, in the, yeah, back, yeah. In the garage. You know. I, I, had a, I had a pastrami sandwich yesterday, and I thought of you. So you know. Wait, did you? Was it your own pastrami though? No, it wasn't. So that was why I was thinking of you. I should really make some of my own pastrami. Yeah. Well, I'm, yeah, I'm ready to make myself my own pastrami. It's just the problem is at this moment you go, boy, I really like pastrami. It's like you're a month away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I hope your taste buds are still in this state. Yeah. It's yeah. a month from now. It's like, wow, I'm really craving a brisket right now. That's not going to happen <laughs> until tomorrow. Yeah. At, at the least, earliest. At least two days. Yeah. <laughs> if you can rush out and get one at this moment and get to work immediately, sometime tomorrow you're getting some brisket. <laughs> yeah. Sometime tomorrow I'm getting some brisket. Yes, exactly. One, th exactly. one thing I wanted to bring up, though, was what Aspen Forrester talked about when we talk about teams and talk about chat. 
And by the way, the nine minute timer's done. Um, nice. <laughs> Thanks, Kowski. Uh, the um, one of the big things that uh, is uh, being pushed a lot, and I see it a lot in people's like uh, statuses, is the no hello aspect of uh, people that do the they they say hello on Teams and then you wait and wait and wait and wait and you don't hear anything. And I know that someone actually built a website at nohello.com talking about this. So I was just going to point that out that the talking about how when you when you do talk to someone on a chat type infrastructure, I typically what I'll do is I'll look and see what their status is. Like uh, if let's say Rick's in a meeting, it says in meeting, I'll say, hey, Rick, I see you're in a meeting. When you have a free minute, can you ping me so that we can talk about blah? Or if you're in a call, or if you're free, I'll say, hey, Rick, I see you're free. Do you have time to talk about patch and switch this Friday? And it makes a world of difference for people when you're upfront about what you want to talk about like that. Yeah. It helps them prioritize. Yeah. We're all oversaturated. Yeah. Help me prioritize. I'm also, if I, if I phone you, not only am I not going to leave a voicemail, but if it clicks to voicemail and I hang up, I will then send you an email. So you saw my caller ID, you're wondering what it's about, this is what it's about, right? I'm not gonna make you phone me to find out, that's rude. It's like, hey, just called, wanted to tell you, da 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 move on. Yeah, 100%. Hey, let's talk about random spending. Um, you know, we we can we'll, we'll jump over the beer money support. We'll talk like, about random spending because which, which sequence are we going in here? Okay, random yeah, we're, we're 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 really eight minutes left to go of the program, yeah, yeah. so we're, we're gonna skip a segment. We're gonna jump to random spending because I want to know, Richard, what have you been random spending on lately? Now that you're there, the studio's all set up, uh, what what is your gadget buying uh, been uh, focused around? Household upgrades. Yeah. So uh, we, have, of course, have had an alarm system for a long time in this house, and it's the old school alarm system. And uh, so the wife's like, can I please be able to control this alarm from the phone? And I'm like, yeah. And I found a product. It's called Connected with a K. And it is okay. uh, little digital controllers that will interface with your existing alarm, watch your sensors, and then allow, able to communicate it with. So you can do an arm disarm. It can get your phone to notify you if, if it goes off. But also then levels up to smart things when exterior doors open, when uh, motion sensors go off. So now you can expose, hey, I want this light triggered when, when this happens, like those kinds of things, without getting rid of the existing alarm. Does, does, it have, does it have a robotic hand that goes over top of the keypad to be able to punch the numbers for you? Yeah, uh, you know, you know what? Turns out you don't actually need to do that. If you program your thing correctly with their controller, yeah. you can simply signal arm and disarm. Oh, okay, just making sure. So, but the whole point was, you know, my insurance is tied to a monitored alarm, and so I didn't want to have to change that. So this mm -hmm. allowed me to add the features without removing the existing system. Nice. So I just upgraded uh, the camera system outside. I just jumped to a new Arlo system for my cameras outside of 4K system. Um, mm -hmm. So I've, you know, the ring doorbell, but I ended up was was looking and needed to make a uh, an investment in it, and uh, I just got that done. Uh, the interesting thing is, is it learns. So the first couple of days of battery, really not good. Uh, in, in fact, it, it, I got the message today. It's like, I think it's been out for, for three days now. It's like, I need to charge the battery. I'm like, this thing's supposed to last for months. So I do some research and it's like, yeah, it's going to learn how things are uh, and, and, and make some, some modifications. I'm just going to run a hard wire out to it. I think it's just, yeah, I, I put it up initially just to get it there. They, I, I, the, the, the wired, the wired uh, power connections come today. Yeah. <laughs> Amazon selection purchase, they're well, coming today. We're IT yeah. people. Hardwire all the things. Yes, right. yeah, absolutely. Hardwire all the things. I'm okay with the Wi-Fi for the for the connections, right? Because the the you know it comes with a little a little base, and I can put it just in the room that sits above the garage, right? So that's fine. But yeah, hardwire all the things. Yeah. What about you, Mr. Plaza? What have you random spent time? 
the literally the last thing in my in my order list that I picked up just recently. I've got two things. One of them is actually beer related. Um, if you happen to watch us do the live stream on Saturday of making beer for Learn to Homebrew Day, uh, we're doing a beer transfer from the Bright Tank uh, over into two different kegs, and we were having trouble finding all the right parts. We were looking for hours trying to find these parts, uh, so I just bought one. Um, I bought a, uh, a one and a half inch tri clamp um, attachment that then has a beer connector on the other side of it built in. So there's no cables, there's no weird adapters you have to buy, just that one thing, and that should be perfect for being able to do a beer transfer. It's arriving later this week. Um, and the other thing I bought was uh, I, I, I had my first bad experience with something being shipped from um, another country. So I ordered a, a camera glass screen that goes and replaces the faulty glass screen that's on the back of my daughter's camera, who's taken a photography course in high school. Um, and uh, it was shipped from the UK and uh, for $9 and then shipped for probably $25 or something ridiculous like that. I don't know what it was. Um, it arrived and the, the dude literally just took the the covered piece of glass, like a screen protector, if you will, threw it inside of a bubble envelope bag and then shipped it. So needless to say, that was crushed and bent and everything else, pulled it out and it was all smashed. You know, to give the guy credit, just messaged him back saying, hey, man, here's a picture. It doesn't work. It's uh, no good. He's like, oh, I'll send you another one. And this time I'll put some better protection around it. I'm like, OK, thanks. Um, so I literally bought a broken piece of glass. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> well, will eventually show up as a good piece of glass in the near future is my is my guess for what that is. So I, I've had a pretty low key random spend after doing the PC build and doing some other stuff. Uh, it's getting on to November. I've got uh, other household expenses to watch out for. Yeah, the holiday season is quickly upon us. Uh, Richard, what's happening in Run As Radio? What and uh, and .NET Rocks? I see some. You had some friends of ours on recently. What's going on there? And how can people uh, connect with you after the program? Well, yeah, I mean .NET Rocks for for .NET devs and continues to to uh, be one of the longest running podcasts on the planet since 2002 before the word podcast existed, and we're over 700 shows now, or 1,700 shows. Yeah, 17. Uh, yeah, Run As is the newcomer. It only started in 2007, but it's been every Wednesday since April 11th, 2007, and we're at 750 or 740. Uh, one of the things that happened this year, which was unusual, I mean, I'm just every Wednesday no matter what, but uh, when the pandemic really lit off, I did a show just sort of IT in the pandemic solo. It's like, listen, I'm an old IT guy. I'm talking to a lot of folks, and we're all scrambling to figure out what to do. Here's my list, just talking through uh, what do you, how are you going to keep the machines secure? They're working from home, and, you know, running down. And, and also just a reminder that we've always known technology was running the planet, but everybody else just got a big old reminder of that. You're going to be sitting in a lot of leadership meetings, and you should prepare yourself for that. Whether you understand it or not, like you're helping lead your company now, and they're going to talk to you all the time, just mm -hmm. make time for that. Uh, and the byproduct of that was adding an extra show a week. So since May, uh, on Fridays, we do a, what we call a pandemic series show, where I'm just drilling into topics for IT pros around the pandemic. So there's easy ones like scaling VPNs and the work from home stuff and migration to the cloud. We've also gone a little further afield to talking about leadership and talking about uh, how we're going to re you know, sort of this recognition that we don't just go back when this ends. Yep. That they, yeah. these changes are kind of permanent. And so, what does the yep. perm, you know, you did a lot of stuff quickly because you needed to a few months ago. Now there's the cleanup pieces, and there's the, well, now that this is going to be like this, how are we going to use office space? Like, what is that going to look like? Uh, the different plans around meetings, different plans around workflows, and, and what the, all of those have gone on. Uh, and so when we were recording this on the Friday, uh, Jess Dodson, we, we, you know, that this was almost a flashback show to go back to how are you prepping your your AD to move into Azure AD? Like, what don't you want to carry across? Um, which is, yep. again, you may have rushed this if you weren't already in the cloud. And now it's sort of that little bit of uh, cleanup work to be done. I don't know how much longer I'm going to keep doing that series. I'm not saying we're running out of material, but it's also sort of a point of folks are there now. And it's becoming yeah. harder to say what should be a Wednesday show versus a Friday show. It's like yeah. the changes are the changes, and now it's right. just the way we do IT. So mm -hmm. I think we'll probably roll those two things together. But it's been an interesting exercise for me as Very a content cool. creator to just pull on the right people and, and to get those, those viewpoints together. 
Well, we've come to the end of the program. We've got three work safe words. Uh, I believe I saw a sneeze, uh, plaid, and reptilian. So those are the ones that I'm going to. Uh, 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 reptilian plaid sneeze is what we'll call the next episode of the big program. I, I, uh, remember, I muted, I thought. Uh, did I not mute? <laughs> yeah, no, you did not. You did not. I did. Yeah, oh, yeah, you um, did, buddy. Yeah. Sorry. I, I did. Uh, remember, you can meet, uh, you can catch uh, Rich Campbell on Run As Radio. Uh, go to runasradio.com. Also, dot net rock. Spell out the dot D O T. You can also follow him at Rich Campbell on the Twitters. We say thank you to everybody who I don't know how I'm going to do this. We've you had we've it. had a big career here. Uh, Absolute Blog and Lutely, Aspen Forrester, A10, AZ Cloud Elf, Bristler Rich, uh, Chicago Cupka, Cupka. Commander Root, DEFCON Veteran, Exchange SME, Fair Brit, Pete. I love it when Pete's in the house. Uh, Foul Temper in the PDX, Gregor. I am pure. Elbal, Elbal, Delra? Uh, oh my gosh. Uh, Delara? Uh, there we go. Uh, Jan, uh, Cassiopeia85, Kate McFerrinkowski, KT Baker77, Lurk, Scott Metzel, Shada Sipanda, SharePoint, Madam Sismus, uh, Tama Toms. TDI Bone, TE Cable Guy, TRP 8472, good to see you, VNK, Virgo Pros, Wired Jeep, Wireless Live CDN, uh, and Dark Soul or Dark Soul. I was going to raid my friends who are doing some coding um, with Azure AD, but they've just disconnected. Uh, so I, I I don't know what's going on. I, I don't know what's going on there. Um, so stick around. We are going to raid somebody. So thanks everybody and, and for Charbonneau tuning in. Charbonneau's up and running, Rick, uh, um, Joey. So you can always dump on him. He's he good out, people. sorry. Ed Charbonneau or even Code Rush. To, Mark's up and going too. So you can, you can drop it on him. Let's do, let's look at Code Rush, Ed. Yeah, let's write Code Rush, Ed. So we're going right to do on. that.